background. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I'm trying to keep the summer vibe going. And I finally yes. got a new computer where I could do something like that. So <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> okay, we're recording now. These 50 degree mornings don't make us okay, feel like summer is still happening. Uh, Right. <laughs> um, does anyone have any questions about the minutes, the July no, minutes? No, I'm good. All good. Um, can someone approve the motion to approve those? Not how we normally do it. <laughs> that is how we normally do it. Right. And... I'll make it. I'll okay, make a man. motion to approve the July minutes. Great. Uh, all in favor? Second that motion. You second the motion, Jeremy. Great. All in favor? Aye. Raise your hand or say hi. Okay. Great. Then the uh, minutes are approved for July. Do we have anyone in to make any public comments? Is there anyone in the audience? Uh, I will. At this moment, I will just say that there's one person in the audience. It is our, uh, it's our council representative, Pat DeAngelis. And so she's here just to observe and to uh, take, I've spoken to her about what is, uh, what's on the agenda here, but she's here as a, uh, as a, as an observer. Okay, great. Hi, Pat. Um, Matt, will you be taking notes today? Can you do the uh, minutes? Uh, uh, okay. Okay. If if you're okay with that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we want want to make note. Uh, and then we can just jump into our topics. Our first one is our pool data collection. Okay. okay. Um, Amy is Amy sends her regrets. She, oh, she can't make it. Okay. Unable to be here today, but this is just to give an update for you on our. We we had the question. We were bringing this up uh, uh, the last couple meetings about uh, preparing ourselves. This is a big part of Amy's presentation. You know, we want to be prepared when the question comes up, why do we need two pools? Do we need two pools? Why do we need two pools? Uh, I and Denise Leckenby, aquatics coordinator, sat down with uh, DPW and finance director, uh, our new finance director, to, uh, to, to, uh, come up with a plan to just basically quantify, get some get some numbers for us in terms of usage for the pools. We're coming towards the end of our pool season. War is going to come offline, I believe, at the end of this week. Uh, and Mill then has a week uh, beyond. But we're at towards the end of the summer. We decided we wanted to try and take a look at our aquatics. Uh, our aquatics options and to look at usage, to look at the demographics of the people that are there, to look at some of the, uh, uh, basically some of the, 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 the options that people have inside of our, our, our invested aquatics, our, our pool operating budget uh, with the two pools and the splash pad. Um, uh, first, the splash pad, we have not yet sat down to, to, sift through these numbers, but uh, the with the support of the Crest Department, which I'm very grateful for because I sat down with Camille and went over our plan, uh, the Crest Director Camille Theriak, uh, and we uh, uh, we came up with a plan of going out, Crest went out to canvas the, basically do objective uh, uh, research, getting objective data in terms of usage, but also talking to people and finding out, uh, you know, how often when they use the the splash pad, what the importance is for them. So it's a combination of objective data and a little bit of narrative for them. Um, and, and with that information, we're gonna try and put that together with some of the, uh, the, the information we can get from the pools is a little bit different. The information from the pools is, is uh, it's uh, coming out of our registration data. Uh, we can get uh, on the pools, we can get demographic information from registrations that we can't at the Splash Park, which is why it's a little bit of a difference. But my department is going to be looking at uh, 
uh, war and mill river usage numbers and putting that together. When DPW and recreation sit down to to put those into place, I will certainly share with you our 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 uh, conclusion, any summaries we have from that information. But it, we did get a two weeks of pretty good data from the from the Crest research at the Splash Park. And now we have the, the pools coming in this week. Uh, no, it doesn't it doesn't end the discussion, but we are we are working proactively to get information to put in front of uh, in front of the town hall, in front of the school, in, in front of the uh, uh, town council, put in front of people as to what the importance and the impact of our pools are, and how just how much they're used. We can say over and over again that that uh, we need every bit of the two pools that we have, but uh, we need to be able to prove that. So do they take a, I'm sorry, take attendance? Um, do they register? They um, note the amount of people at both pools when they yes. come. At a day? And so we even without this research, uh, the pools do track numbers. We know we know when people when people use the pool. We know uh, when they're not using the pool. We know when the down times are. This summer has been. We haven't had any like. We haven't had any. Uh, you know, ongoing, certainly no mechanical issues that have knocked the pools offline for extended period of time. Weather has been, as you all probably know, as much as anybody, it's been a little bit up and down where today is going to be a little bit rainier than it was yesterday. And then tomorrow is gorgeous. Uh, and you know, there has been some fluctuation in the weather, which you're going to get with outdoor pools. But we do track, we do have the ability to track numbers in the pools. We're trying to put that all into a uh, one space. I think I, you know, I certainly believe that that uh, having two pools, while other towns, many towns don't have one, I think having two pools is a very, very useful and a very important asset for us. Uh, having it spread across different parts of the town is useful for us. I think that it's certainly, uh, from as a director, I think it's a it's a amazing resource that we have. Uh, we want to make sure when it comes down to paying the price of operating those two pools that 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 the benefits that it shows are are part of that picture. I see Matt's hand is up. Yeah Matt, do you have a question? Just comment. Yeah, I, I sort of had a thought after last meeting in last month's meeting. What is the relationship with the middle school pool? Like that is another pool, correct? Um, and we rent we rent access to the middle school pool. Uh, the middle school uh, operates its uh, that pool is operated on its own school budget. The uh, and to operate pools are different from our baseball diamonds or our gyms in that in order the increased use means increased where on the on the systems uh on the it's a it's a it's a uh, you know, the, the chemicals that are used to chlorinate the pools so so we don't have the same ability to sort of get in friendly when we use it more we have to pay more for the pools uh that where is part of our our cost our relationship with the middle school pools they we are their their main we're we're the we're the we're the main users of the pool. We have more time scheduled in there than anybody else. And as we've expanded our aquatics program and put more, I think our, the value in our aquatics program has importantly, you know, broadened and allowed us to to really present the town with with strengths in our aquatics program that we didn't have a couple of years ago. As we've expanded so so, so what you're saying is you you currently. It use the pool extensively when the outdoor pools are closed. Yes, when it's not, we use it in the summertime also a little bit. Uh, during the during the summertime, we have access to our own outdoor pools, and we'd rather not pay for access if we don't have to pay for access. When I mean, the root of my question is: if if War Memorial Pool was to suddenly disappear, could you just use the middle school pool, and could you come to an arrangement with the middle school to make that work? We could we could certainly rent the middle school pool through the summertime if we did not have 
So if War Memorial was down, when we had the mechanical issue two summers ago with War Memorial, we actually spent a month uh, renting the pool at the middle school. So that's a that's a fair, uh, uh, you know, a recent example of what you're asking about. War Memorial was down for a month and we rented the pool at the middle school at, you know, it certainly cost us a good amount while we were, while we, were, while we had a staff. But are they, was, are they like separate lifeguards and stuff? Or can you, could you just, can you use your own lifeguards there and own staff there? We could bring our, uh, we don't have to use the pool. The schools don't have a, a the schools don't have a roster of lifeguards. We have to supply our own oh, lifeguards. Okay. So, we would bring our lifeguards over from our pools to staff whatever pool that we we have. Our aquatics program hires our our aquatic staff, uh, cashiers, lifeguards, and sh swim instructors. And wherever we are, we have to pay that. We have to pay our staff, and we have to pay for the pools unless it's our own. The, which is again why Warren Mill are important for us through the summertime, through our most active time for recreational swimming, for leagues in some cases, but for lessons, for camps, for uh, open swim, for lap swim, all of these things, when we don't have to spend money on on renting other pools, it's financially in our best, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's to our benefit to have pools that we control. I see that. Is it more expensive? So it's more expensive to operate the middle school pool and the warm water pool. Is that what you're saying? It is more is more expensive for us to rent the middle school pool. We don't op. It's the same people that essentially operate the pool. Uh, it's the our town DPW is the one that that uh, supplies. We buy the chemicals. DPW supply. Uh, 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 they they administer the chemicals in the school pools and our town pools, but it's more it does cost us more money to rent the pools when it's not our own. And so we have relationships with the middle school. We have relationships with Hampshire College. Uh, we're trying to work on other pools where we'll also have some ability to to expand our programming into other space and maybe even find the friendliest cost for ourselves. Should I go ahead, Gene? Okay. Um, yep. So, so uh, Ray, first a question for you. I uh, appreciate the way you framed this as being prepared for questions about owning and operating two pools. Is is there is that question already being presented to you? In other words, is there already pressure on the operation of two pools? And let me also just say to the other. Uh, commission members, particularly, or committee members, particularly, I want to acknowledge my absence for basically an entire spring. And so uh, if I'm asking questions that I should know the answers to from having read minutes or been in attendance, sorry. <laughs> no, okay, great. You. I guess I have thank to be you. back. Thank you, Sanjay. It's always good to see you. Um, uh, is there pressure there? Not, not hard pressure right now, but we've already heard the question. We have heard the question through every repair season. I think the uh, when the bill comes in and it's as high, we did hear it to sort of link into what you did miss in one of our conversations uh, when Amy was presenting about the war memorial piece, when when the conversation came down to the, the rising cost of repairs to war memorial, then immediately I think necessarily, I think the question goes, okay, so if it costs this much, do we need it? And and as a director, as a commission, I think we should be prepared for that question anytime we start talking about a bill that runs that large. Um, do we need what we're spending the money for? Or can we find a way to get by? And I hear that in Matt's questions. Uh, can we find a way to get by? Is there is it possible? What flexibility do we have to, to find a different way? Um, I think that there's all sorts of ways that having these pools helps us fulfill our mission in aquatics and our, our, our recreation mission. So there are a lot of ways that this helps us fill, fulfill that mission. If the price is too much to fulfill that mission, then the town has to ask itself those questions. 
or to be prepared to answer those questions from the taxpayers who will ask those questions. Um, and so I think it's my interest to try and make sure that we have uh, we have preparation, we have we have statistical uh, uh, support for our answers to that question. We have to be flexible enough to look at it and say, well, maybe we should be looking at something different if there's something different that allows us those same options. But but you know, I we have heard the question before okay. in CPAC. We've heard the question in. Uh, in and community comments, we've heard those. We've heard that question before, uh, as the as the price tag goes up. Good, thanks, Ray. I, Gene, I see Chris's hand up. Could I just? It's, I was just I'll try to be very <laughs> concise. Do we know what the comments here? Yep. Do we know what the number was, Ray? Do we know? We, know? we don't know. What 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 to number? Main, to maintain what number? keep War Memorial open for the uh, it's. It's a matter of that the cost for the renovation project. And remember, I don't I don't have it in front of me, but uh, right. remember we we're looking at millions of dollars, and that's one of the reasons why four we million. four million was right was the number. That oh, we I didn't know there. running it like it cost fifty thousand a, a year to run it between maintenance and chemicals and employees and stuff like that. I didn't know. No, here we're not looking at the at the cost of running the pool. We're looking at the cost that it takes to to uh, uh, redo the rebuild the the bathhouse and to do all the work in the space around in the war recreational area. Yeah, so we're talking, we're not talking about the pool, <laughs> right? In the immortal words of Alan Iverson, we're not talking about the pool. <laughs> yes. We're talking about, we're talking about a large project that actually was conceived of as using the pool as an anchor for a recreational district in the center of Amherst, which is the millions of dollars, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. So good. I'm glad that I, again, my apologies, but I'm glad to understand that clearly. The, 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 four, the, four million, the four million was just to renovate the bathhouse. It didn't include the additional upgrades. Okay. Good. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Yep. So, um, so just very concisely then, right? Uh, like, I'll just repeat, like, the pool is the, an anchor of this big plan for the area. And so it's actually quite surprising to me to hear uh, that the continued operation of War Memorial might be something that people are questioning. And then uh, it's always funny with town services, the exercise of sort of accounting for its value and contribution to the community, right? And so, I, Ray, I admire and support the effort to collect data in advance of more serious questioning coming up. Um, however, let's be prepared for the fact that the pools are not going to, because I've looked into this, and, in my, and should not be expected to, quote, break even. And therefore, the commission should debate, right, and discuss our position as a, as a commission, right? But in my opinion, the commission should be prepared to assist Ray and the rec department in making the case for town investment in open air swimming, open air summertime swimming, right? Now, others may disagree with that. And on the commission, that's perfectly fine, right? This is my opinion. But the, these exercises of trying to account for the sort of balance sheet of town services is, uh, is an interesting one, I'll say. Thank you, Sanjay. Chris, did you wanna <laughs> add anything? No, no, I'm just, I'm just honestly trying to figure out how to get my hand down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, on your bottom screen there, you should have a little raise hand and then lower hand. <laughs> yeah. And my my daughter went back downstairs, so I'm having all kinds of technical difficulties. <laughs> so you just, you are what you are now? Yeah. Well, Chris, that's funny because Zoom actually tried to automatically lower my hand, which I think probably says something about who Zoom <laughs> wants to hear from. AI, AI is getting <laughs> clever, Sanjay. <Saturday. laughs> you just keep talking, Chris, and I'll eventually there say, you I'll put your hand down for you. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, those are really good comments, Sanjay. I think you're... You're right. I mean, we do need to support whatever the <laughs> the department, so, you know, wants to go with I them. Think, I, think I think it's really I important think, that we support them. 
I think, sorry, Jean, I, I think that I can probably segue into the next item here, which Becky Demling is here with us. Uh, I think I can segue into the next item pretty quickly and easily just by summarizing that outdoor pool thing is saying that we are trying to, in recreation and beyond, but particularly in recreation, we're trying to add value to our offerings. We're trying to find a way to extend our value into, into areas. It's a service that we provide to try with the pools. It's a very specific service, lessons, recreational swimming. Uh, we try, we're trying to add value in as many ways as we can, affordably and responsibly, of course. And and then we get into these situations now where the where where we have to find out just how much that value is valued, how much how much that value is is you know echoed back for us. If we believe that we're doing a service, if we believe that we are extending and doing a service here in a way that Amherst does or should value, then then we're doing our job, and we can put that out there and let let. The taxpayers and and our supervisors, we can let them sort of guide us in that. But we're trying to add as much value as we can, given the resources that were provided. And and so uh, moving from aquatics over to our outreach, Becky hasn't been here with us for a while. So I asked her if she would be interested in coming and sharing our our outreach it's been a long summer. It's been a very, very successful summer. Some of the things that we've introduced before have, have, uh, have now taken form, and we're trying to find where those next pieces are. So I do want to, I do want to uh, sort of just uh, transition over into Becky's report on outreach and special events. Hello, all. Thanks for um, having me back. Um, it's been a while. Um, so it's been very busy. We just finished. Um, our seven weeks of fun in the sun day camp. Um, we had 90 students a week over the seven weeks. And every week we had four to 10 counselors in training, um, which was a return um, this summer. Um, we had a lot of fun. We had a lot of hot days. We had a lot of rainy days. Um, and most importantly, I think we learned a lot about camps and what it uh, takes. Um, one of the best parts of camp happened um, a few weeks in. We, um, I think I, I, one time I spoke with you, maybe February, we talked about Culture City um, and sensory inclusivity training. Um, so in July, we were able to secure the requisite number of trainings. Uh, forward-facing staff. So all of the camp staff and all of the aquatic staff got trained um, in sensory inclusivity. We purchased headphones and weighted lap pillows and fidget toys um, and made those available at camp to great success. Um, it was actually a real joy to, you know, watch kids using the tools that helped to make them more successful. Um, and we do hope our primetime staff, when they come on board in the next couple of weeks, will get trained. Um, so a large part of our um, of our employees will have this new certification and will have access to this equipment at our programming and events. Um, Denise actually using ARPA funds uh, speaking of pools, was able to get some sensory uh, kits. We made some bags for the pools with some waterproof kind of items. So those could be um, available at each of the outdoor pools. And um, we have one at the middle school because adaptive swim is happening at the um, middle school pool right now. So Denise has a sensory bag there as well. So we're Super excited about the Culture City certification. The press release is coming out through the town tomorrow. Um, so we're hoping that it gives us a lot of good um, publicity. And I will say, um, Samantha Giffen and I were looking at the Culture City map and we are the first rec department in New England to achieve the certification. So we can feel really, really good about yeah. that. <laughs> Excellent. Becky, just quick, was the training in person? How, what was the training like? Was it 
virtual or um, in it, it It's a one hour online training um, that you do individual. It's self-paced. Um, you have to get at least an 80. There's a quiz at the end. You have to get at least an 80 in order to be considered um, as having passed. It was, I have to say, as someone who worked in special education and also has um, a special needs, a child with significant special needs, I was really impressed with the training because the focus of the training isn't about making the kid fit in with the environment. It's about adapting the environment to meet the needs of the child, um, which was a really refreshing approach. Um, and I think because it talks about like, oh, here's tools you can use, here's what to look for and what it means. I think for people without a special ed background, like it made it really accessible. And so they could implement it more easily because it was just, it, it was just really well presented. So Great. does anyone have any other questions on Culture City before I move on to the next? Topic. I had a question about so this camp, the fun in the sun, was that a camp that has been given in the past? Yep. Uh we do it every and, summer. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. And what what about, about the numbers compared to like other years or so we're usually like I think pretty consistently fully enrolled. Yep. Um so we have 90 students a week in camp 30 in our early adventures, which is our five and six year olds and 60 in our um, Epic Explorers, which is our nine through 12. Any other questions before I move on? Yeah, Becky, if I could. Okay. Yeah. Sanjay, um, how were numbers for the sports-oriented camps this summer? So I only run the Fun in the Sun camps. I don't oh, run okay. the sports camps, so I couldn't speak to that. Okay. Um, I can tell you that our numbers were down a little bit for the for the sports camps. This some of our some of our sports clinics, uh, you know, did see some some clinic competition in the area that kids were were choosing. Uh, the clinics were pretty well reviewed, but but we did our our sports clinics numbers were a little bit down this year. Do you, what were some of the competitors that you have in mind? If you don't mind my asking. I don't know. Okay. Don't know specifically where that. We know a couple of camps that that some of the kids were going to, um, but I, I mean there there are plenty of options that people are are looking at right now. Um, and any new programs, I think, have the potential to sort of draw people in. I think there were some exciting opportunities that that other organizations were offering around, and and we've already started to look at ways to. I don't know when our kids back, but kids that kids that are very much involved with our programming during the during the year, we're trying something different this summer. Okay, good. Thanks, Ray. Matt, did you have your hand up? Yeah, I, I'm glad that the fun in the sun was fully enrolled. Um, I'm wondering if there's a demographic drop in the student population which could be contributing because um, my son works at a summer camp and he said their numbers were down and it has in the past been a very popular camp. So I think there are a lot of factors. Um, one thing that our program does um, benefit from is that we accept um, childcare vouchers from the state. We also have an arrangement with UMass and they um, they subsidize childcare for their, um, their uh, the children of students at UMass. Um, so we're definitely one of the most affordable camps in the area. And I think that protects us from some of the demographic bumps. Most of our weeks, I think other than 4th of July week, we had um, a wait list. So, Chris? Is there room to grow or no? I mean, I don't get me wrong. I, I had a CIT there, so I know the facilities are, <laughs> we're tight. Facilities are tight. Um, your CIT was amazing, no, I will you. say. Sure. Unequivocally. Um, so we are, we staff to a ratio, like yep. we, we staff based on how many kids we have. Um, we have 60 kids in one cafeteria. 
That's a lot. A um, lot of rainy day. I don't envy uh, any of you for that. Yeah, we and we're extremely fortunate that we get to use um, the bulk of the downstairs of the middle school. So we have access to the gym. We have access to the auditorium, um, the band and orchestra rooms. But um, I don't think it would be feasible to have more campers. I think that's kind of the magic number with what we can staff and what we can reasonably fill right. in the cafeteria. And I totally forgot to mention another draw of our camp is that because we're with the town and we have a good relationship with the school district, they provide free breakfast and lunch to all of our campers. Right. Um, so that's something that we're able to offer that most other camps are not. Um, and ARPS food service was absolutely amazing. They gave us weeks worth of menus and um, we're really fantastically uh, working with our kids, especially when they were like, I didn't order lunch, but I really want that pizza sauce. <laughs> so they were extremely accommodating and um, super amazing to work with. And you all, I, I apologize if it looks like I'm, I'm, speaking to you all and practicing my my preaching to you all when you're not the ones that need to hear this the most but another major thing that our camps offer is swim lessons uh for all the kids that come right. through yeah. and so one of the things that makes it a really really inviting really really popular camp is that swim lessons are wrapped into the admission into the camp and so to have a full summer of access to war memorial uh you see where i'm going with this sorry mm -hmm. becky <laughs> And we also do go back for afternoon swim, like open swim. Most of the campers choose to go back. So the kids are going um, to the pool twice a day. I actually had a mom come in on Friday, which was the last day of camp. And she was just like, so my kid actually learned to swim the summer, like not doggy paddle, but actual swim with like rotary breathing and everything. And she was so excited. And um, yeah, we are we benefit so much from having War Memorial there. Uh, Sanjay, did you have a question? You're muted. Go ahead, you're muted. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. Okay, sorry, a bit of a diversion, uh, and it can just be a quick yes or no answer. Is the middle school pool used in physical education at the middle school? Do students swim in gym class? I don't believe so. I don't know that for sure, so don't quote me on that, but I don't believe so. It's right above our heads. I think I know, <laughs> but but it's not. It's there, not that, uh, that answer the no because mine just went through it and yours okay. did. Yeah, no, there's no. Okay, there's in anymore. I don't even think she could have tapped out of it because when we when I went there, you had to take it. My kids too. I learned how to make a shirt into a light, you know, life for this. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm good. So yeah. Um. So one of the things that um, we were able to do going back to pools is um, the summer, um, I did a lot of work on pool passes for partner agencies. Um, so for the Survival Center and the ARPS Family Center, we give um, free uh, family pool passes and individual pool passes and really like documenting like how many we have trying to um, like really track the numbers of how many people are taking advantage, not only taking a pool pass home with them, but then redeeming it at the pool so that we'll have better data on that, like what the pool pass to redemption ratio is. Um, and also this summer we started kind of library card pool passes for the senior center, um, the Amherst Housing Authority, and um, Wayfinders, which runs Butternut Farms and Olympia Oaks. Um, so residents, because those are all um, subsidized housing, were able to like, they could go to their um, office and borrow the pass for a day and then have free access to the pool. And we're also tracking that. So we are aware of how many individuals take advantage of those programs. Nice. Um, just another way our pools are <laughs> so instrumental. Um, 
Another thing I wanted to bring up, one of our big programs from last year, which I know I met with you about, was um, Morning Movement and Mentoring, a program we run at the middle school for seventh and eighth graders. Um, we're well back getting ready for the fall. Um, this past spring, this past year, school year was um, such a success. Um, so we're looking to um, make some adjustments and continue to improve enrollment. So we ended the school year with 64 students um, enrolled uh, for level three students, students that kind of need wraparound services. Um, we paid for van transportation. We hired school vans to pay for this, um, obviously using ARPA funds to pay for it, not our um, actual budget. And so this year, what we're trying to do is really secure outside funding for this program so it can live past um, ARPA. So we're actively working um, to collect the data we need to secure outside grants or funding for this program. Um, we've just settled our schedule where the MOU, the draft MOU was submitted to town hall this afternoon. Um, and we've already got 28 kids enrolled in the program um, for this fall. It'll start the third week of September and run through Memorial Day week, which is when we started to notice the um, attendance dropping off after the after the student athletes from Amherst College and UMass left, um, a lot of students decided, yeah, I'm not sure I wanna get up <laughs> in the morning. So um, we've already been in communications with UMass and Amherst College, and they are going to have, both schools are sending athletes this year to participate in the program. And both are gonna be hosting the students for field trips throughout the school year. So we're really fortunate to have such amazing partners. And if you go to the community breakfast um, at UMass, is it a week and a half away? Um, Chancellor Reyes is going to be speaking about UMass's um, involvement in and commitment to morning movement as part of his speech. So, um, so that's super exciting. And then the last thing, I wanted to bring up was the 250th. Um, as you're probably aware, the US will be celebrating its uh, 250th birthday in 2026. Um, planning for that um, started a couple weeks ago. Um, so the state is holding information sessions. Grant cycles are starting. There's a grant due at the end of August, but it's nothing that, um, it's a Mott grant. Um, Massachusetts Office of Travel and Tourism. It's not a grant that the town would be competitive for. Um, and all the funds have to be spent by, spent by the end of June next year. So it doesn't benefit us. But we have started, we had a stakeholders meeting with um, Amherst College, UMass, um, State Representative Mindy Dom's office, um, the Amherst Historical Society, and Emily Dickinson Museum. So we've started to plan, um, not like, it'll be lots of disparate events that are timed together to make larger events. Um, obviously the fireworks will be a big part of that. We're looking to see what kind of funding there is to support like larger fireworks displays or displays on the 4th of July. Um, Amherst has been doing fireworks for 174 years. So we definitely have a longstanding tradition, um, but over the next several months, there's gonna be more and more um, information sessions and more planning. So we're we're definitely strong into planning on it um, and kind of figuring out how how it'll look across town. Um, and we're also lastly, we're getting into um, back to school event season. <laughs> so we'll have the um, the Amherst Rock will be at the 
back to school party on the um, Sunday before school starts. We'll also be at the block party. We're gonna unveil our um, sensory inclusive tent at that um, event where we'll have like a kind of a little calming station, little quieter access to headphones and some like sensory toys just so individuals who need a little bit to relax We'll have that. We're going to be, that's going to be closer to the fire station this year. I don't know if you were there last year. We do face painting and glowing the dark tattoos. Um, we're usually down near a stage. They're going to move us up further um, closer to the fire station. So it's a little quieter. Um, we are also going to be helping with um, Hispanic heritage planning as well as the Halloween spectacular, which I do hope we'll feature a parade as well this year. So that's kind of the outreach where we are right now. Does anyone have any questions? Right. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Okay. I won't give any questions. Good job. Thank you. Yeah, I know. It's amazing all the stuff that you, that you do. <laughs> yeah, I was just saying, whoop, that's a lot. I know. <laughs> and... I, I will confess I'm really excited camp is over just so that I oh, can God, like yeah. catch up on everything else. Yeah. I don't know if you've noticed, but Becky does have a, this is the first day of, after camp glow. So we're... Right. <laughs> It's more the lack of fatigue of not walking over 20,000 steps at work. Yeah. So, um, no, like we had a great camp staff. We had a great admin team. Of course, there were bumps along the way, but there always are when you um, have a large camp. And I have to say, like, I was really happy. We had a lot of students at camp who um, get IEP services. And the fact that we were able to successfully like work with them to keep them in camp and make modifications that benefited them, like it feels good to run an inclusive camp. So yeah, it's so exciting to have heard about the cultural training before. Now it like it really happened. Like, yay. Yeah, no, I mean culture city, this is what schools do anyway with our kids. Like this is what our occupational therapists do, what good teachers have. They have they make accommodations for students who can get sensory overwhelmed. When you have as many kids in a cafeteria as we have, you, you are gonna have a number of kids that get overwhelmed. And having the tools and the training to have staff respond to them in ways that is supportive and helpful instead of like, why are you freaking out? Like it feels good to know that we can do even small things to make a kids camp experience that much more positive. And so I'm, I'm probably, I'm probably uh, leading Becky to a little storytelling here, but uh, the ARPA grant that, that I think Becky's done an amazing job of, of, uh, budgeting and prioritizing and trying to really find a way to make that money mean something for our department. Uh, it, it, you know, we can talk about it all we want to about how important it is to have all these different resources and these different options for the purpose of equity, for the purpose of, of, uh, you know, support for students that maybe talk about MMMP and rise, talk about all these different ways that that ARPA money can benefit us, but how beautiful is it to look at at people using those resources? How uh, you know how uh, we can talk about success all we want to, but when we come to the end of the summer and we all of a sudden see kids that are that are taking those resources and making it normal and their own thing and this is this is this is what i've always wanted and they, they're finding comfort they're finding safety they're finding security they're finding rhythm in those things that we've put money into uh, however much money we make on the other side it's just has been a really nice sort of end of the summer as a lot of the, the purchasing a lot of the shopping that we've done has has uh uh, you know, all of a sudden is shiny in the in the kids' faces and the community's faces. Uh, uh, you know, it it is amazing. For, I, I don't know if anybody here has uh, 
know, we didn't talk about the, the, the adaptive swimming piece right now, but it's really is just regardless of how much money we're making, we, we got some, it, it is, it, it's not about, as Sanjay said, it's not about trying to find out how much money it's making for us. It is an effect of those programs. It's an effect of, of that money spent and, and extending services and allowing people to be involved in ways that they haven't been involved with us before. And so, um, you know, I, I think it's been in, in at least, a, in, in at least a strong sense, uh, a success for outreach and ARPA this year. I agree. And if, I wish everyone could see Adaptive Swim Lessons. I'll tell you like of everything that makes you feel good. Um, so I super applaud Denise um, for working to bring those about. Um, so I, I'm pretty open that I have um, a son who is autistic and cognitively impaired. My kid could never do swim lessons because the way swim lessons are organized, they don't work for him. And when I talked to Denise about that and like the statistics around, like if you're on the spectrum, you are 160 times more likely to drown in your lifetime because you're attracted to water and don't know how to safely engage with it. Um, the joy of watching kids who've never been able to go into a pool safely, like actually learning how to swim. Like we have a student, um, who's taking adaptive swim lessons who has cerebral palsy and has significant um, mobility challenges as a result. And so one of the pieces of equipment we were able to purchase with ARPA funding is this, it's essentially a life jacket floaty for um, like a wide brim for um, students who have cerebral palsy. It's specifically designed for kids like him. And to watch him really like he's kicking, he's stretching his arm. He's like the first day he didn't even want to get in the water because he was scared. And then to see him like I was, I, I confess, I was in the water with him last week, like a week and a half ago, just because um, I've had a long relationship with this family through um, my former job. And he was in the water for over 45 minutes, just like motoring around having like the best time and it's like those are the moments where you look at like what the benefit ARPA can bring to this community these kids that are taking swim lessons with us have never taken anything with rec before because we didn't offer anything that met their needs and now we have this whole beautiful program that's like allowing access to so many kids. Um, and it's, it makes me feel good, even though my kid is probably too old for them and no longer needs them. Um, I'm so happy that like, it's probably one of the greatest things we're doing at REC right now, in my opinion. That's awesome. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that story. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, does anyone have any more questions for me before I let you move on with your agenda? So the ARPA grants, um, right, is that part of what we've already talked about or is there more that's on the agenda? I can certainly go over ARPA. Um, I did not bring my spreadsheets home, but I have a fairly good memory of what we um, spent money on. Is that uh, what you wanted to talk about a little bit more, Ray, about and, those? Uh, we don't have to, I guess that, uh, I would, I would love to, I would, uh, I guess I can leave it up to the chair here as to whether or not you want to get a, get a sense for what we spent the money on and, and, uh, you know, sort of where the, the money left over and what, what money we're working with right now. Um, uh, Becky is yeah. certainly prepared, Becky's certainly prepared to share. And yeah, I and I won't have much afterwards either. The Cherry Hill piece is, is a very small piece of an update, but. Okay, yeah, sure. Becky, please. So I don't have my spreadsheets home with me. I'm trying to access them through my email right now. 
Um, but I can certainly come back and give you a more detail that can give you my spreadsheets. Um, so as you'll know, the town allocated $200,000 um, to Amherst Recreation, specifically for outreach um, to new communities. Um, so we have spent the largest chunk of that on, um, so we've spent what about $75,000 of it on morning movement and mentoring. Um, that includes this year. Um, we do, um, we are working with the school that they're going to invoice us for the costs after December 1st. Uh, after December 31st so that we can skirt around the ARPA. You can't spend money after December 31st unless it's a third party vendor contract. Um, so we are doing that. Um, another thing we spent money on was investing in um, equipment that we could use within the communities. Um, we don't really have, we didn't have hula hoops and jump ropes and other equipment that we could just bring to parks and play with kids. Um, so one thing we've been doing this summer is called Pop Up in the Park, um, where we travel through um, like Groff, like today I was at Groff and I had a flying, I had those like oversized flying discs and um, we were doing dot marker and paint marker, little picture creations. Um, and it's, it's really just a way for families that aren't taking rec programming or don't really like, they don't really know who we are. They don't really know what we do to start conversations with people about how we can meet them. So we've been doing that all summer. We've gotten rained out a couple of times, but um, so we've been bringing equipment and just playing games with kids and families um, at Groff Park, Kendrick and Mill River. Throughout the summer for an hour and a half, uh, Groff is on Mondays, um, Kendrick is on Tuesdays, Mill's, Mill is on Thursday. Um, so we bought some equipment for that. We bought lots of like lawn games kind of thing like we used at the 4th of July that we'll now have for community events going forward. Um, we bought an equipment lending library for some of our more expensive sports that for which um, equipment can be a barrier to participation. Um, so we bought equipment for like lacrosse and um, field hockey, things like that. So that, so players who could sign up who didn't have the equipment or they wanted to try but didn't want to invest in the equipment that we could help them out um, and let them borrow equipment for the season and then return it. So that worked really well, both for lacrosse and tennis. Um, and we'll, the rest of the sports are this fall. So we'll see how that goes with our leagues. Um, we did spend um, approximately, all right, so this is gonna sound like a really big number, but I'll break it down for you. We did spend about 45,000 on um, aquatics and that's equipment for um, the uh, um, for adaptive swim. We bought ADA compliant stairs for both pools um, so that individuals who can't access the ladder or don't feel comfortable um, can do that. We also bought um, the chair lifts at the pool like the ADA lift to the pool has been broken for a long time. So we also replaced those so that we could actually help people get into the water more easily. Um, so we spent money on that. We've spent money on... Allie. Allie, yep. I've had a... Um, I was able to get the town to let me hire someone for uh, eight weeks this summer. Um, who helped me with the 4th of July um, and also has been really running the pop-ups in the park most of the time because I've been at camp for the last <laughs> seven weeks. So um, she's been great helping out with that. She's also done a great job. She went through the basement at Cherry Hill. She went through the storage at Rec um, and she's conducted an inventory. 
So we know what we have and we know where it's stored, um, which is pretty exciting for me as a type A person. Um, I like having a spreadsheet where I know where things are. Um, what else? Oh, Culture City was paid for using ARPA funds. Um, we have a three-year contract with Culture City, which is about $1,750. And then the town gave us about $1,000 more to buy equipment um, to utilize for the program and replenish it because we know some things will not get returned or things break, things like that. So the town did give us ARPA money for that as well. Um, we did pay for one Cherry Hill repair with um, the ARPA funding and there's one thing I'm forgetting that I can see the tab in my mind, but I can't read it in my mind. Um, I'll have to present you all my spread spreadsheet, but I have been working with the town ARPA grant administrator um, to make sure that we have, um, not only are we not leaving money on the table and having to return money to the feds, but that we're really documenting and showing support for what we do with that money, um, which has been really fantastic um, to make sure that we're, we're getting the biggest bang for our buck long-term so that we're having like, my approach is to buy things that are sustainable long-term that like I got an, in, um, an inflatable movie screen, um, which is really great. So if we wanna do outdoor movies, we can do outdoor movies and we have this resource in the community and don't have to rent. And it's so big, if you've ever seen the stage in the middle school, it hits the ceiling. Um, on the stage in the middle school, which is really cool. So um, definitely not this summer, but going forward, we could do movies on the common or other things and have the equipment for it, um, which will be really nice. Uh, I just figured out what the other tab was. Um, Rise, the building bridges through basketball program that we ran last fall was paid for in part by ARPA. Um, Rise paid for their facilitator. We paid for everything else, including the gym rental at the middle school and the custodian. Um, so we used ARPA funds to pay for that. Um, the reception to that program was really positive, um, not only for the students who participated, but for the adults who participated in the program. Um, and we were asked to run that program again. So we'll run that again this fall and again in the spring. And that will be ARPA funded as well. Anyone have any questions? No. Money well spent, sounds like. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I, I'm going to miss ARPA. <laughs> Remember that Morning Movement and RISE are both, we've talked about it in our commission meetings, both are done in the spirit of youth empowerment. Um, um, they in addition to equity and access that is in, in, you know, in place in all of our ARPA programs, but those are two programs that we're doing with kids, with middle school age kids that are that are really up in the area of youth empowerment. And that's come up, I know your comments have led us in that direction in previous commission meetings. Right. Uh, Thank you, Becky. Thank you all. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. See ya. Um, okay, so. Um, can I continue with Cherry Hill? Yeah. I can say that I don't intend to take a long time here because we haven't, we certainly haven't started it. I want to just say that after last month, uh, after last month's meeting, I certainly got a lot of conversation. Like, as soon as you mentioned Cherry Hill, and as soon as Cherry Hill hits the paper, and I know some of you all were quoted in the paper. Uh, so thanks, right? <laughs> congratulations, Chris. <laughs> Chris is a celebrity in his own home now. Um, the uh, I I know that Cherry, there's there's a lot of I think latent passion in this community for or against Cherry Hill. I think there's when you mentioned Cherry Hill, I think there's 
there's some energy behind that. And I want to make it very clear. Number one, I apologize. But let me let me make it very clear what what I should have said if I didn't say it clearly before. Um, and I've tried to coach myself not to make this mistake. Uh, uh, this is uh, when I said that the the course was was uh, was in the hole was financially uh, that that our budget was was I forgot what the the quote was but when I said that the budget was was impossible to manage at the state it was whatever it was that I said there fifty thousand dollars fifty four thousand dollars in the hole it doesn't mean that we were that that we spent more than we than we raised in revenue I don't. I want to make sure that you all hear me say that we made more money in revenue than we spent at Cherry Hill. We were we were fifty thousand dollars over we were fifty thousand dollars over budget in in important lines inside of our budget. So before uh, finance finds a way to balance our books, before we get a chance to 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 figure out how to make our numbers work, there. Are, we were we were overspent in three important lines and and lines that we don't have a way to manage beyond that uh, you know how we how we balance that is is uh you know it's the magic of finance but but for me uh, again that fifty thousand dollars fifty four thousand dollars that we were that we were overspent in these particular lines are a concern for me I can keep on doing that and we can keep on making magic happen. We can keep on finding out a way to, to, uh, to rectify our budget if we need to. All I need out of this working group, what I'm looking for out of this working group, what the town will be looking for is an objective sense on how we, uh, on, on how we can do this without going back into the, if there, if we have a budget that is set under what operationally, is uh, what is operationally successful for us, possible for us, then we need to investigate what the cost is and what it should be. If we can't invest or have all these other very important capital needs that are coming down the line here for the town, interests, needs, there's a long list of things that the town is going to be looking to the taxpayers for, for money on. Uh, just adding doesn't make sense with all of that blindly without prioritizing. We need to find out just how much operating Cherry Hill is and should be and, and find out what the next steps forward for management are. The, the, the working group that I see hand up, uh, the working group that we put together, the task I've already, I've spent the last couple of weeks sort of fielding people who have interest in addition to our two commission members. There are people who've reached out and said, I'd really be interested in serving on that commission. The one thing that I say constantly is we need people with an open mind. It's We don't need a cheerleading group. We don't want a group to go out there and say, hey, rah, rah, Cherry Hill. It's not about whether or not Cherry Hill is, is, is a, a cool place to spend an afternoon. It's not a matter of not, it's not even a matter, we talked about a little bit with the pools. It's not even a matter of whether or not uh, it has some value for us. It's a matter of whether or not the cost it take uh, the, the cost that that uh, you know, the town has to invest in operating it is worth uh, uh, you know prioritizing. And what are our options if it's not? Um, I'm open minded on it. So I'm and I know I would I wouldn't put anybody's name for it in the working group if it was just it was just like, hey, look, we want to try and find a way to to reach the conclusion we've already reached that give us money. That's not that's not the purpose of the working group. The purpose of the working group is to is to compare, to 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 look at our history and our competition and our and our our opportunity costs and everything that the town needs to think about when it talks about the next management steps of that course. I would love to. I said when I took over and I knew I was. I didn't know when I took the job just what the history of Cherry Hill was and and how much of a of an issue it can be financially for my department for the town. But I said we have the asset. 
as a manager, I'm going to try and do whatever I can to make money out of that resource, to be able to raise revenue, to be able to provide a service here. I'm going to try and take this, this resource and make it work. And if it's, if it proves to be too much, if it proves, if every end of the budget season, I have to go and say, answer the question, why are you so overspent on these lines? Why are you so overspent on these? And the, this, the answer is the same thing every year. It's either the choices I make are either to spend or shut the whole thing down. If those are the, if those are the questions that I have to answer every year, we need to try and find some way to answer it otherwise. And so I'm done with that. I don't, I don't need to, uh, part of this conversation is what I'll, I'll be involved with the working group. John Quello will be involved with the working group. We might be able to pull out other people who've been involved in the course and have them involved in conversations with the working group. But, uh, um, you know, a lot of this conversation is part is 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 sort of the introduction for that group to do its work. But I did just want to make sure I clear that up that we're not, you know, we're not bleeding money out there. We're just spending a lot more money than we're supposed to to raise the money that we're raising. Um, uh, I see hands up. Go ahead, Matt. You had your hand up first. Yeah. Ooh. So so. Has Paul actually approved it? Um, he has. Uh, I can't formally say that he has approved it. I can say that he and I are working on the details of it. We're working on the uh, on the people that are going to be involved in it. We're working on on the. He's he's reviewed my charge, and I think that we may be working on some of the language inside of it. But uh, okay. I cannot tell you that he has approved the the working okay. group yet. So uh, someone in the community approached me with a with a specific idea related to Cherry Hill, which I don't know if I should introduce right now, but he was wondering when the community, if there's going to be community sessions for those ideas or a way for community to put in ideas. Um, I am making a note for myself right now about community sessions, and this is the first working group that I've that I've pushed a charge forward to, um, you know, I'll, I'll meet with Dave, I'll meet with Paul and, yeah. and put and the idea of having community open session. Dave, Dave had, Dave had also had over the past year expressed specific names outside of the rec commission to me that, uh -huh. um, so I'm sure he's involved in selecting the names too. He will definitely be involved in a, in a variety of ways. He'll definitely be involved for us. Chris, can we go ahead? So, Ray, we've been uh, talking about this for a while. Mm -hmm. um, the way the golf season kind of works is your season's not over right now. Right. But if I'm just trying to push you a little, not necessarily just you, I get my first golf bill in January 7th of next year. So if you're going to try to do something, I mean, it's, it's, it's far away, but it's not. I know, yeah. We can't change budgets and ideas and stuff like that in July of next year. It's at that year, at that point there, another year, I would never say is lost, but it no. takes the steam out of, I mean, you, if, you know, if you want me to, you call the Zomac and whatever, and we can uh -huh. also push to try to get this thing going. I mean, you know, if you told him we were going to do baseball fundraising in July, he'd be like, no, we got to do it in January, February, because, you know, that's when, you know, the season starts. You know, I hear your push, and I, um, I, I agree. I like earlier today. I was, I'm sort of thinking about about the timeline here and how we need to get this moving, because I'd add to what you just said and say that some of the comparisons we're talking about. There are other golf courses that will be closing soon, and without the introduction, without getting information from them, it may be harder to get some information from courses if you get two months into this and they're hibernating um and well, so you know, people start renewing their memberships like yeah. i renew my memberships in january once i'm done i don't look anymore and i'm not saying to, the to be clear to be clear right. i don't i'd love it if it worked out this way but to be clear we're not we're uh, i don't think my goal is to fix the budget for our next posted season right. because i don't know that that's that's the that's the answer i don't think that's a that's a realistic goal target for it but uh but in terms of timing i think that 
this is the perfect time to start looking at it because all of us that are running golf courses are looking at, okay, how can we do this better? How can, right. what do we do? How can we do this better? Thank you, Chris. Okay. Yeah. So Ray, you mentioned um, it needs to justify itself against other, ta other costs. Is that other rec costs or even just other town costs like the DPW, the library, yeah. et cetera? The, the town is, is I don't know, I haven't been here long enough to talk about precedent or unprecedented, but the town has a long list, shopping list right now. Uh, there are a lot of public projects that are somewhere in the queue, that are somewhere in their developmental plans. We have a few of them. Other, other departments have a few of them. We know that we have other projects that we're also looking at. And it's not to say whether or not this is an important project, but uh, but if the answer is to invest town and taxpayer money into it, then the question is, do we want to do that at the expense of other things? Could it invest town energy and tax tax money in? If the answer is to outsource, if the answer is to, oh my gosh, shutter it. If the answer is to is to uh, you know convert it over to find alternate revenue as as was brought up at the commission last last month. Um, if the answer is to try and find some alternate revenue there to offset some of that cost, if the answer is private investment, they, whatever the answers may be, if if we explore those options at, ex, at instead of putting it in the queue against those other projects, maybe Cherry Hill has access to some of those that some of those other projects don't have um, to go out and find outside management for some of those other projects. If outside management helps us in the situation, then that's something that we should, we should take a look at. Uh, I don't know. I haven't done enough research into it. I know a little bit, but uh, our situation isn't that much different than say uh, South Hadley, whose golf, whose public golf course, 18 holes, but it's public golf course. It was, put out to outside management and they own the course and they're and if I if I'm wrong on any of these details feel free to just tell me so or or correct me later on in the paper um uh the uh you know South Hadley South Hadley has outside management running its its uh municipal course and so if we are like them if there's it may not be a feasible jump to get to that space I don't know the answer to that but but that uh, there are options on the table that don't simply uh, come down to us saying, save the golf course, give us money. Matt, do you want to add something? Yeah. So, so I'm just trying to understand what you're saying the financial issue is. So it sounds like the, from what you said at the start, I'm not sure if this was correct, that you bring in more revenue than, than, than the, the operating costs. We bring in yes, we 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 do have more more revenue than expense right now. We we okay. raise more money than we have expenses on charity. So the, the 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 problem is that you feel like there's going to be some some capital expenses required, and you don't think that they're going to get passed by the town capital budget. That is that's a part of it, but also inside of our operating budget, we are spending more. We're spending a lot more in our operating budget than we are. Um, the, the, but if it's if it's re if it's revenue, pot, I mean, if it's if it's profitable, then then what's the problem? I don't understand. Um, it's not profitable enough. Like why, why sound, does it have to be that? That doesn't sound like a rhetorical question. Um, <laughs> um, the uh, I agree with you. I mean, I if. Uh, if it's not profitable, um, it's not. I don't know how to how to answer this question without potentially. I, I don't uh, um, uh, without potentially misspeaking, and I want to be very careful not to misspeak this week for the second for the second month in a row. But um, uh, one of the one of the weirdest things for us is that you know, we are making more money than we're spending, but the way our budget is set up is that we are not so, uh, you know, I, I, I believe that if you spend more money and make more money, then you should be okay, but that's not the way our budget works. Um, okay. <laughs> 
so maybe it needs to be separated out into its own ex cost expense, its own uh, department or something. <laughs> there are uh, or sub department, yeah. its own its own account. Right. Good, Sergeant. I don't know the correct accounting yeah. term that you use in the town, but yeah, um, I'm learning. I, for context, I I think that there was a significant period of years in which the course was not profitable, right? And there is no doubt that 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 period of time is influencing current discussions. The period of time during which the course has been profitable. I actually don't really like using that word with respect to town operations. The period of time during which revenues have exceeded expenditures is short, I think two or three years. Now, is that the new normal? Maybe, maybe not. I think that's something for the- Well, we did have person. a golf course close in town. True. We did. Yep. Um, so I think, Matt, like I'm sympathetic to the phrasing of your question, right? But I think the pressure on Cherry Hill is a res is not responding necessarily to the past year or two, during which expenditures have exceeded budgeted expenditures, but still have been lower than revenue, right? The the pressure is long standing. I don't think that's a surprise to anyone. Um, I have one very technical question for you, Ray, which is. Does the revenue stay within the rec department or does it go to the town general fund to general maybe fund. or maybe not be reallocated to the rec department? Because that speaks to the question of, quote, exactly. profitability or not profitability. It's still yeah. fund. Yeah. So that's the problem, right? <laughs> or a problem. I'm using the word problem. Um, but that's yeah, the they're not they're not that, they're not lined up against exactly. Each other. That's the accounting detail. That's, because... And so, Matt, that's I think that's the answer that I'm trying to exactly. say. That exactly. The revenue is not matched up against the expenses there for us. Uh, and and I, I, I don't want to misspeak by by sharing with you where I think we are with that. But I don't I think the answer is that because it is general fund and the expenses are not matched against our revenues, uh, our revenues we want to raise as much money as we want to, but that's independent of our expenses. They're not, it's not a single business that's operating for itself. Right. Thanks, Ray. So th that's the, thank you. Thank you. Sa that. Sanjay, you actually helped me to figure out what, <laughs> what, what cloud <laughs> I was in. Jonas, did you have a question? Just a uh, speculation. There's, there's, um, it's not anything to do with like the opportunity cost of what it could be for the town, is there? Uh, I think we talked about it really doesn't make sense sense as in being really anything other than a golf course, right? Other than like, I don't know, cross-country skiing. There's no like desire to develop it or um well actually that, the, 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 kind of the idea the, the idea that I heard from a community member was sort of along those lines. I guess the question then is the town think of that, not just a you know a citizen, as much I, as I have not be, heard that, or been in that conversation as a as a as an option that's being pushed. But I would tell you that that has to be on somebody's mind. That has to be. Uh, I, I don't think that we're going to get through this conversation and think about its viability without without thinking about opportunity costs and thinking about what else could happen there. I, I think there is some, the, the nature of the, the town's acquisition of that land, when the town purchased that land, I think it's very specific what can happen there, but that's several steps beyond where I am right now. Okay. We'll keep us posted and updated. <laughs> I, I will, I mean, it's, uh, it will be something there is, as you know, most, if not all of you all know, after that last meeting that there was a little bit of attention and energy into, hey, recreation's talking golf course again. And so that, that certainly, that certainly could increase the, the attention could increase uh, the, you know, our wanting to be in front of that, which is what this working group is, is, 
uh, trying to do, to do it objectively, to do it with a sense of responsibility to to uh, the process and to the taxpayers and to what have you, that 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 it's not just that that that, that we that we get a clean bird's eye view look at what our what what our possibilities are. Um, there's a chance that 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 brings more attention, brings more energy, and uh, you know that's we certainly know that we won't be able to find where we're going here without at least uh, uh, introducing the, the 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 golf course to our you know bringing it back to the surface and letting letting people really think about existentially what we are as a department as a what we want to have what we want to be. I think that increasing value there has always been a goal, um, but there are limitations to what we can do given the structure and given our investment. So Sanjay and Chris, stay tuned. Uh, I do have your, your names have been mentioned and put forward. Again, your challenge is to, is to go into it objectively, is to go into it with, uh, with, with a, the, with an objective look at possibility and and you know we will as a as a commission i think we'll have a lot of energy into and 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 you know sort of the next steps i have nothing for osrp i was gonna ask <laughs> no okay no updates nothing. okay um any other updates i, I have a, i have an item that i probably should have submitted earlier which is um i'm i'm current I, I, the past year i was the recreation commission representative on the cpa committee and each year the recreation committee needs to send a representative to the cpa committee and has to vote again each year i'm willing to take that again this year um, but we do have to uh, hold a vote. Thank you. I, I apologize. I forgot to put that on the on the uh, on the agenda here. Um, and so that so that Matt doesn't have to toot his own horn. I think Matt has served uh, terrifically for the last couple of years. I am I would support uh, him back in that position. But I I do. This is not my vote. Your commission. Your your. Uh, uh, it's it's your responsibility to make sure you have somebody in that CPAC, CPAC seat that um, that makes sense for you. Is it in order for this meeting, or do we need? To uh, it would be better if we did it so. It would be okay. great if we <laughs> could do it now. The calendar. We have a, we have a quorum, yeah. right? We have a quorum yeah. to vote. Yes. Yes, we do. Okay. I think um, Andy would also vote. Matt was there too. <laughs> Do we just have it's just one representative, correct? One representative. Yeah. Andy was a representative for from the planning commission when he was on the planning commission. Oh, right. Or I think That's it was right. the planning commission. But so he, his, in yeah, the, his that first was months. that was before the, the past year he was not on the CPA committee. His first few months we kind of cheated and had two two voices on the commission because he was technically <laughs> no, still serving. We did have we did have a year where where both Andy and I were on the CPA commission. Uh -huh. But the, the past year it was just me and it was yes. a different representative from this um planning commission. So I propose that we take a vote um to have Matt as our representative for the CPAC committee. Is there a motion for All those in, is there a motion? Yeah. yeah. I vote yes. I vote yes. Well it's motion first, I believe, right? <laughs> Go Matt. Yeah. Second to the motion. Okay. So who who second the motion? I will second the Jeremy. motion. Jonas. Jonas. Okay. Um all those in favor? Aye. 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 So unanimously. Matt, yeah. thank you. Okay, you, Matt. and I can give I can also give a little update um for those I don't know if it's been in the paper or not, but if you haven't read the paper. So the, the school department relating to the, the high school track project, which some of you might be interested in, um, the school department has been determined to move that forward. Um so uh in view of that, um they 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 want to do the uh 
turning the track to the north south the the uh artificial turf got scrapped by various communities so they've given up on that but they want to rebuild the track with a new grass field in a north south orientation and the school department is pretty determined to go ahead with that um and to help with that the cpa committee has revised its earlier uh from a few years ago grant to remove the restrictions and then recently also approved another grant um to 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 really try and get that across the line and then the the school department is going to reapproach the other towns in the regional school district to try and get some CPA money out of them. So I don't know thousand. if you have any questions about that. I think combined, I read I'm something like one point two million. Um, with like respect to what thousand more out of us and like four hundred thousand out of the surrounding towns, something I think I read. That's the hope. Yes, that's the hope. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I hope then, so, man. You know, I hope so. Yeah, yeah the, the, they're determined to get it done one way or another, either I by phase, phasing some things out or hopefully it come in um, below the budget. Or the, the budget has like a contingency in it. So if it comes in yep. at the budget, then then we'll have enough money because we won't have to pay the contingency. See, right. Any timeline? Do you have a question? Yeah, actually, Matt, with the, with, the move, with the move towards grass, is there a provision for upkeep maintenance groundskeeping i think the idea is that the idea is that it's not going to be more the upkeep than it currently is they right. are the, the the designers are convinced that they will be able to build it in a way that is uh better than the current one they they think that the current one wasn't built properly okay. um better drainage better yeah, Google. better drainage, better sub sub drainage, and then in terms of timing, so um, the the school department's plan is to do permitting um, in this fall, and I think they were planning to go out to bid in the winter, and to get it constructed next year. I think that was the plan. Thank you. Okay. Well, <laughs> overdue for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Um, any new business that has hasn't been brought up? Anybody? Uh, we do not have any report from the chairs. Any report from any other staff members? Ray, anything else? Our next meeting. Okay. Next. Thanks, Pat. To... If she's still around. <laughs> she is. I can bring her out and have her say hi to you all if, if I can. <laughs> we <Colin>. love Pat. Tentatively, <laughs> <laughs> um, our next meeting is uh, September 9th. You will confirm. And again, I threw that just in case it works. I hope that it works. Back on September 9th. Okay. Excellent. All right. Well, if we don't have anything else, then we can officially adjourn at 7.38. Thank you all. Thank you. Oh. Next time. What, Ray, do you have something else? I was just going to say you should probably motion to adjourn. Oh, motion to adjourn. I'll second that. Thank you. Bye. All right. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. All. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Have a great night. Being adjourned. All right. Yeah, <laughs>can you hear me? I can. One second. Let me stop recording so you don't swear and get in trouble. <laughs> you have such...